Scotland have qualified for Euro 2024, which by no means is a feat that should be underestimated. To put into context, the last time Scotland qualified for any major international tournament prior to 2020 was back in 1998. Scotland went on a good run of qualifying for the World Cup between 1974 and 1990, qualifying five back-to-back -back tournaments. This was in their peak of Scottish football, back when he had the likes of Dennis Law, Graeme Souness, Kenny Dalglish. This was a fantastic era in Scottish football. However, 23 years went by without Scotland qualifying for a single one, with some awful and frankly disastrous qualifications along the way. So for Scotland to qualify for back-to-back -back tournaments is a massive achievement, and especially considering their group. Scotland have qualified out of a group with Spain, and Norway, and Norway being a nation which a lot of people have a lot of high expectations for, considering, you know, they really have the best player in the world right now playing for their nation. Scotland have always been a laughing stock in the eyes of many people in the United Kingdom, predominantly England, I guess, and that is something that they've always held very true to themselves. If you know or speak to any Scottish person, then they will tell you how they frankly have no expectations of their nation whatsoever. Scotland as people, and especially when it comes to their football, are probably the most proud, self-depreciating nation in the world. No one can take the piss out of Scotland more than Scotland. <laughs> Seriously, that is why you find in most Scottish culture that they seem to just joke and take the mick out of themselves most of the time. As the saying goes, if you don't laugh, you cry. However, there is this weird tribal mentality that if anyone, for example me, an Englishman, tries to take the mick out of Scotland, then I mean, they're gonna let me know, but that is Scottish football culture in, in a very blanket term right there. However, the tide may be turning. Scotland have now got a nation that they may actually be able to have some belief in. Similar to Wales, but I guess much worse, the fact that Scotland have actually had some decent players over the years, and they should have been doing better considering how big football is in their country in comparison to their performances on the international stage. They've had some great players across the years, players playing in higher level, competitive levels, but never really made it work when it comes to on the pitch. Wales, across their entire history, never really had anything to really shout about. Yes, they had some great players like Gary Speed or Ryan Giggs, but in terms of actually qualifying for tournaments, their first ever qualification for the European Championships was back in Euro 2016, and they came third. Look it up, Wales never qualified for any European Championship in their entire history since 1960, and their first was 2016, and they went on to the semi-finals. That is a unbelievable achievement. Are Scotland now potentially entering what could be a kind of golden generation era where they can now have a team good enough to compete at the international stage in major tournaments or actually make it there in the first place. Even being there and being part of the party in itself is remarkable and when people joked and mocked them for their performances back in Euro 2020 as they did get knocked out in a group stage, they frankly didn't care because just being there was enough for them. And this is what I want to get across in this video as despite the fact that I am English, I do like Scottish people. I do like seeing Scotland or Wales or Ireland at least at the tournament. That may sound really weird, but I don't care. Like, I would rather watch Scotland at the World Cup compared to Slovakia. I think a lot of people would too. I, I actually know people from Scotland and Ireland and Wales. I know people, so I can actually have more banter. You know, if I see Slovakia versus the Czech Republic, for me, that plays no factor to me than if I see Ireland v Wales or Scotland v Ireland, you know what I mean? So I want to see Scotland do well, I want to see Ireland do well and I may, uh, that may make me weird to some people but really I I just don't care. Of course, tell me down below in the comments your thoughts on Scotland and the potential rise of the Scottish national team because this is an incredible achievement and it should not be looked down upon. And if you guys do enjoy it, then please do smash the like button. Let's try to hit 2,500 likes. And also subscribe if you're new. We are almost at 390,000 
subscribers. We should, I hope, hit 400k by the end of the year at Christmas. If you can help me with that, then I would mean the world. And of course, Scotland for 20% off all items on Mozilla Designs to Code UK, my own football print design company. Got some great Scottish club and national team prints as well, including Kenny McLean's goal versus Norway. So link down below, top of the description and let's get into it. I know it's quite a long intro and to be fair, this isn't really an intro, but I never really do anything that makes sense anyway. Let's crack on. I want to thank About Scotland or Everything Scotland for helping me with this video. It's a great Scottish page which have helped me with a lot of information to just give me some insight about the Scottish game and what's happened over the last couple of years, what's really changed. To first understand the rise, we need to know the fall in the first place. Scotland have had some disastrous qualifications in their recent history in the 2000s and 2010s. If you go to any Scot and you mention to them the Georgia game, then they may actually punch you in the face. For example, back in the convocation for Euro 2008, they had a pretty good position where they beat Ukraine 3-1 to put themselves on top of the group. And all they had to do was simply beat a Georgian team, Georgia, to make themselves all but qualified for Euro 2008 because the next game is Italy. So they really want to make sure they beat Georgia. They lost to Georgia 2-0. Scotland, of course, had to win over Italy to qualify, and they lost 2-1 due to a late Italian goal. I also want to highlight this video by Copper90. It's height being Scottish. This is a fantastic, potentially one of up there with one of the greatest football documentaries I've ever seen. Copper90 or the Gorts. I love what they do over there. And if you want to see really what Scottish football means to them over there and what they've gone through, then this is a fantastic video. And Honestly, after this video, sure, watch it. It's great. In Euro 2012, Scotland had Spain and the Czech Republic in their group. And despite them leading against the Czech Republic at Hampton Park, they conceded a penalty in the last few minutes, which they went on to go and score and draw the game. And if Scotland won that game, then they would have qualified second in the group and reached the playoffs. Euro 2016, which had eight new teams qualify. So of course, Scotland should be able to make it. And in a group, they had likes of Germany, Poland, Ireland, and of course, Georgia. Scotland lost 1-0 against Georgia again. They don't like Georgia. This was pivotal for them and they had Poland at home and they got knocked out due to a stoppage time equaliser. Yet again, pain at the last minute for the Scots and they finished fourth in the group. For Euro 2020, they were in a group with Belgium, Russia, Cyprus, Kazakhstan and San Marino. Well, obviously they beat San Marino because who wouldn't, but obviously they could have overcome a Belgium and Russian side, but at least they were better than Cyprus and Kazakhstan. People didn't really have much hope with only five wins and five draws, but they had a chance via the Nations League playoffs. Two massive games for Scotland, and they were both somewhat beatable. They had Israel in a semi-final, which they went on and beat them on penalties after a 0-0 draw. And then came the final, the moment for Scotland, as they had Serbia away in Serbia. They had the chance to make it to the first major international tournament since 1998 and they went 1-0 up by a goal by Ryan Christie and Scotland were minutes away, seconds away from qualifying for the Euro and in pure Scottish fashion they tried to c*** it up yet again with a Luka Jovic 90th minute equaliser. Scotland and last minute equalisers is the story of the last two decades of their entire history in football. Scotland needed a hero and that hero came by the name of David Marshall. And David Marshall saved a Alexander Mitrovic penalty to send Scotland to their first major international tournament for 23 years. And as I said before, despite Scotland going to the Euro and qualifying bottom in a group with England, Czech Republic and Croatia, I'll be honest, they did not care. We do need to know about one man, this man here called Steve Clark. Steve Clark is a man with an interesting track record in his managerial career, being manager of West Bromwich Albion, Reading and Kilmarnock before taking up the Scottish job back in 2019. His time at Reading and Aston Villa and West Brom isn't really too much to speak about. However, for Kilmarnock, this is where he gained some respect among the Scots. When Kilmarnock took over, they were sat bottom 
of the table and instantly in his first two games he had Rangers and Celtic drawing 1-1 against both teams. That was a massive moment for Kilmarnock at that time period. He took Kilmarnock from bottom of the table to fifth place setting a new club record points total of 59 points and won the manager of the year award for that season back in 17-18. Kilmarnock with Steve Clark also kept up the pace with getting a win over Celtic and two other Rangers and finishing third place for European qualification for Kilmarnock, winning both Manager of the Year awards yet again. To the people of Scotland, he already became a symbol of hope for the national team. And he is the man that has took them from not just qualifying once, but also twice. For the 2022 FIFA World Cup, it was a bit of a shame that they did qualify for the playoffs, but was not tapped by Ukraine in a semi-final at Hampden Park. However, if it means anything in the Nations League, they've kept up the form yet again after the Euros. This was big for Scotland, as it did give them hope that they actually had a lot more going for them than what people would believe. Qualifying for the Euro in 2020 was not just a freak accident, and they've got a bit more behind them to keep this momentum going. In the Nations League, they had Armenia, Ireland, and Ukraine, and they finished top going into Group A of the Nations League, where, for example, England just got relegated of the Nations League to Group B. The snowball effect of Scotland have continued onwards that after that Nations League, they got a group with Spain, Cyprus, Norway, and also Georgia, who are the fierce, fierce enemy in their history. And they won five games in a row, not just beating Cyprus and Georgia, but beating Spain 2-0 at Hampton Park and having the most incredible comeback away in Norway to beat Norway 2-1. Thanks to two last minute goals by Lyndon Dykes and Kenny McLean but that's the beauty of the nation they are a team and not just individuals speaking to the people at everything Scotland saying what did Steve Clark bring in that was different to the previous management in their own words they say that Steve Clark has given as much experience to the players as possible meaning that so many players in the team have got many caps and are ready at any time period to do a shift it also helps that in Scottish football so many more players are going abroad to play much more consistent football in comparison to just staying in Scotland or playing for a bit part role in the English leagues they are going abroad and seeing what more they can do with themselves for example Ferguson, Hickey, Josh Doig, Mebuild and Matt Johnston and so many others as well. Scottish players are going abroad when in the past they didn't do so much. In the past you've had Darren Fletcher, Duncan Ferguson, Stephen Fletcher, James McFadden, Charlie Adam, Alan Hutton these are Scottish players that have played for Scotland in the past but according to everything Scotland they never really felt together back in these days they had a great squad at times of some experienced Premier League players but they still never really came close to really qualifying in that game against Norway they showed some great character to come back and to win that game 2-1 against Israel they were 3-2 and their heads did not drop and they came back and still got a result. And most importantly, when they consider later Serbia, in the past, they usually would drop their heads, but they kept on course and beat them on penalties. And tactically, it's hard to really describe Scotland too, as really they are incredibly adaptable. The word overlap is a very common phrase said in Scottish football, as that is predominantly their main strength as there is that kind of weird thing that Scotland their best players appears to be full packs of the likes of Andy Robertson and Kieran Tierney but I would say they're a bit more than that as of right now they play a sort of five back where Robertson plays as left wing back and Tierney left centre back that means that when they go attack Robertson pushes up when Tierney can fill his space and acts like a normal left back so an attack is a four back but in defense is a five back and vice versa on the right hand side where Hickey plays as a right wing back and Portius as a right centre back but of course fill spots when they need to that means that in transition they are fluid in any scenario. Scott McTominay of course have become a massive leader Scotland national team as it is really strange when you look at who scored for Scotland in this qualification only one is by a a so-called forward, an attacker, which is Lyndon Dyke's one goal in Norway. The rest is six goals by Scott McTominay, which is an incredible achievement. John McGinn with two, Ryan Porteous, Callum McGregor, Kenny McLean. I mean, it's, they are an effective team and a very adaptable team to whoever they come up against. Steve Clark has took McTominay and adapted him from before he used to play as a somewhat centre-back, but now he plays in midfield, which he has free freedom to just go forward and create overloads when he can. So that gets him in the areas to score the goals that he does. The football that Scotland plays is not 
pretty by any means, but they know their strengths. They're not going to be stupid and try to pass out from the back when it's not necessary. Keeping a clean sheet is vital, and that is why they don't really concede that many goals. Of course, however, they're not perfect. People may say, yeah, but they lost to England 3-1 recently. Yes, they lost to Ireland 3-0 um, just over a year ago, and that is absolutely fair but of course not every single team is perfect at all times and with Scotland and the quality that they have I don't think it's really incredible keep in mind again they're doing all this with London Dykes being their main the main number nine which by no means is a great striker no offense to him but last year for QPR he scored eight goals in championship and the year before that he scored another eight goals in the championship so with scotland qualifying for the euros yet again totten army as they're called will of course be there in germany and i'm looking forward to seeing how they can do for the sake of scotland i hope they don't get in a group with england again because I, I i just can't be bothered with, i just cannot be bothered with scotland yet again but i wish them luck and respect to steve clark for what he's done at the scottish national team can they go on and do what wales have done which they had years and decades of no success or really no involvement in competition pick up a run where they can go and qualify and back to back to back and maybe we can see them in the world cup for 2026 i mean don't forget as well they probably will be in the euro for 2028 as they are a host nation so it's a good time to be a scot right now and hopefully they can get a moment to look forward to at the euro in germany so tell me about your thoughts on scotland thank you for watching and i'll see you next time peace out